would I say? What would, I, what would be the first question I would ask somebody like that? Based on what that lady said, what would I ask that person? What would I want to know about her? What are you really getting at? Well, okay. But what would I know, want to know about her to understand why she's in this situation? What kinds of things? The lady with the red scarf. I like the way you look, buddy. I can't help it. Stop looking around. You. You. Her. What, what, what would you like to know about that woman? Yeah. What questions would we ask her? Let, let's ask really basic questions. All right, I, I told you that earlier, so I can't tell you not to. I would say, what level of education do you have? Why would I say that? I'm exploring her universe to see. She said she doesn't really have alternatives. But let's work backwards from love addiction. Why do people rely on drugs or alcohol so much? Because they don't have more suitable, satisfying, fulfilling ways to feel OK about themselves or that they can accomplish something. So I would approach drug addiction and love addiction the same way by building up the human being so that they're strong enough, strong enough in the sense that they have enough other things going on in their life that they aren't tempted to feel that this is their best alternative. So what might I hope this woman would do, for example? What would be some of the things I'd want to move her towards doing? Going back to school. Going back? It's not brain science, is it? Oh, that's Nora Volko, isn't it? She thinks it's brain science. She's going to be looking for a spot on their brain, and I'm going to be saying, have you thought about going back to school? What would it take for you to do that? Well, I'm not confident. What kind of support would you need? Uh, do you need money to go to school? What are you What? Ah, uh, that's good. See, I'm being too me. She's saying, what are you interested in? That's a great place to start, isn't it? What would you like to pursue? What have you dreamed about pursuing? And by this explanation for addiction, whether for love or towards drugs, we don't... It's just like, let's study the effect of heroin on the brain to find out why people are addicted to heroin. We don't say that. What are the effects of love on the brain? Although you'll read that every once in a while, like in the paper. Brain impulse discovered for lovers. You know, you'll see that every once in a while. But nobody's stupid enough to think, well, that's why women stay in relationships where they get beat up, because they get a brain impulse. <laughs> <laughs> so you see, thinking about love addiction sounds kind of silly in a way, but in fact it leads us more evidently to one of the most effective treatments for addiction. Does telling a person, does assisting a person to have the confidence and ability to go to school sound like the treatment for a disease. Usually, when people come to the hospital with a spot on their lung, they don't say, how much schooling do you have? Have you thought about going back to college? You know, they're two different animals. All right. We've been through the ringer together, haven't we? We've had such an intense relationship. Go on, shoot. Quick question. Mental illness. Huh? That's a statement, but men mental illness and, and how that would come into play. And yeah, mental illness is a disease. Would you agree with that? 
Why not? Yeah. Uh, I think there's a myth in that rule that there's only varying degrees of irresponsibility. <laughs> I thought he was the AA guy, but maybe I'm. <laughs> I am that too. And I think addiction is a, a spiritual disease, not a physical <laughs> Well, I don't know how to answer that question. I mean, I would say this. Fundamentally, my question, what I, my question for every human being who comes to me with a dysfunctional approach to life that's hurting him and is debilitating his ability to get rewards from life is, how can I work with that person to improve, however incrementally, their ability to do that? That's my impulse. And it's. And you know, I, one way to think about it is how do you deal with, maybe this, I don't mean to sound kind of silly, how do you deal with a child? You deal with a child by enhancing their capacity to get rewards in their life on their own, independent of you as a parent. And so with a very dysfunctionally schizophrenic person, I would try and work with them as much as possible to master basic fundamental skills. By the way, did I ever tell you that everything that I think has become the way they deal with everything? Have I mentioned that? <laughs> and they used to define schizophrenia in terms of what? The major characteristic used to be thought, huh? Hearing voices. Huh? Hearing voices. Hallucin hallucinations. Now <laughs> they look at schizophrenia <laughs> the way I told you. How dysfunctional is their behavior? How can they increase that on a gradient? And, you know, one thing you can do is to teach people to disregard, what was that sound? Oh, I think it's important. To learn to recognize the difference between hallucinations and reality and learn to cope. And then you can progress some way. Hey, buddy, what do you think I think about the distinction between physical and psychological addiction? If you, if you were me, what do you think I'd think about that? No, not you. <laughs> the guy in the red sweatshirt. You hung in here, buddy. I like that. Listen, I just sounded down. I don't know what you just said there. What do you say? What do you say? You repeat it. You didn't hear what you said. What do you think? It's a complicated question. It confuses even me. What would I say if somebody said to me, is that a physical or a mental addiction? What would I say? Forget you, what would I say? Would you say, what for schizophrenia? No, we're back to addiction. Oh, back to addiction? Uh, I don't know. You be me, I'll be you. What, uh, what about the difference between mental addiction and physical addiction? Mental addiction or physical addiction? Mental addiction is more... That's you, you're not being me, buddy. <laughs> All right, is there somebody who can be me? Not you. <laughs> somebody I haven't heard from. What would I say? Huh? Is it a physical addiction to be addicted to the relief from pain that heroin provides? 